This video is sponsored by Skillshare. But more importantly, hello and welcome to the Grand Line Review, your source for everything One Piece. And today I am here to present the most rewatched scenes in the entire series. Because yes, I am admittedly a pretty big critic of the Toei anime adaptation, but when they get it right, they have the ability to hit absolute gold, resulting in a positive litany of scenes that are so burned into my mind that they even take precedent over the manga. And while I do have my own personal list of most rewatched scenes, I am less interested in that. And so I asked all of you to give me your most rewatched scenes in One Piece piece, and so I've compiled those into a handy little list. And let me just say, this is a powerhouse list. If you were given the task of getting a friend into One Piece based solely on showing them a handful of scenes, then these are the ones to pick from. Right after you've kindly prompted them to subscribe to the Grand Line Review, that is, along with yourself, of course, which will result in regular One Piece content being uploaded straight into your YouTube feed. That is by far the most important thing to do as a One Piece fan, right before re-watching the following scene, starting with the revelation of Gear Fourth. So dress Rosa, Look, it's probably one of the darkest periods of the One Piece anime, saddled with things like five minute sections of recap, extraordinarily poor pacing, and ever unfortunately degrading art quality. However, this one scene stands proud in a league of its own. Toei knew that the very first Gear Fourth transformation was a landmark moment of the series, and they did it a hell of a lot of justice. The animation is fluid, detailed, and designed to really capture the eye like nothing else this arc is capable of. Meanwhile, the sound design and music built an incredible sense of anticipation as Luffy continues growing and building into this hulking mass of rubber. And while the ultimate form is a bit shocking to those who are expecting perhaps a sleeker design, Luffy quickly puts any of those worries to rest with our very first Gear Fourth attack, sending Doflamingo flying. It is an absurdly satisfying scene, a real diamond in the rough for Dressrosa, and absolutely one of the most rewatched scenes in the entirety of One Piece. But for something slightly different now, another scene that got brought up a lot was the death of Whitebeard. And very understandably so, because this selection of minutes manages to accomplish so, so much. Primarily because it does act as a parallel to the very first scene in the series, with Whitebeard's dramatic last spoken words proudly declaring to the world that the One Piece does indeed exist, thus setting the stage for the second half of the series. But Whitebeard's death acts as a tragic climax in many ways, bringing an end not only to the life of Edward Newgate and the first half of One Piece, but also an entire era of piracy. Whitebeard was the last great pirate of his generation, and the weight of that loss was was not lost on the production team, who gifted this scene with a beautiful array of shots, with a selection of touching yet world-shaking music, and thus really giving us one of the most memorable deaths in anime, which is a pretty fantastic recipe for rewatchability. For a more action-packed moment though, one of the most rewatched scenes in this series is 100% the grand finale of the fight between Luffy and Rob Lucci. And this is one where I really can't count how many times I've seen it. Certainly enough to be able to recite the entire thing by memory, that's for sure, because I was in late high school when this episode came out, and at the time, well, I thought that this fight was the greatest thing in all existence. In fact, to this point in the series, it was probably the most satisfying finisher, simply because of how beautifully it was structured with all of the brief one-line flashbacks from Water 7 and any Sobby, and not actually having Luffy's jet gatling gun land until after Robin's I Want to Live was heard. And with that entire journey in mind, we finally got to dispatch of Rob Lucci in a fairly brutal yet satisfying manner, as well as the whole rescue Robin operation with Luffy's fantastic words directly to Robin afterwards. It was a perfect cophony of a saga and a standout moment that I personally rewatch regularly to this very day. Before moving on though, just to reiterate, this video is sponsored by Skillshare, an online learning community with thousands of inspiring classes for creative and curious people. Explore new skills, deepen existing passions, and just get lost in creativity. I mean, for example, you could take classes in animation, photography, graphic design, music, marketing, business, and a whole ton of other incredibly useful and valuable topics that I cannot even come close to exhaustively listing here. There's even a whole bunch of classes dedicated to making content for YouTube specifically, one of which I checked out was the YouTube thumbnail masterclass taught by the budgeteers, which was really fascinating actually. I've been doing this for what, five years now and there was still some very enlightening stuff in there. And on Skillshare, unlike right now on YouTube, there are no ads, meaning that you can stay focused with an annual subscription of less than $10 a month. Plus the first 1,000 people to click the link in the description will get a free trial of premium membership so that you can further explore your creativity. So look, just do the thing. It'll be fun, I promise. About as much fun as going through some of the most rewatched scenes in One Piece and coming up we have another finale being Luffy versus Katakuri. And you know what? I actually don't even mean the fight itself. Because yes, the whole conflict from Snake Man onwards was a phenomenal experience, but what I and many others are referring to specifically is that last vocal exchange between Luffy and Katakuri. The standoff at the very end where after everything Luffy has given over this marathon battle, he finds that Katakuri is still standing. And with nothing left to give, Luffy prepares to fight him as best he can, but instead he is met with a simple question from Katakuri. Will he come back one day? 
way to defeat Big Mom. Which Luffy responds with what I would honestly call the best Pirate King moment in the series thus far, where he does his thing and states, of course, because I'll become the king of the pirates. But the way it's staged in the anime is so beautiful, being able to see Luffy's seemingly infinite amount of reflections in the mirror world take on his words as well. And the orchestral piece underscoring everything effectively builds this epic tension before cutting to complete silence to see Katakuri finally fall. This is one of those moments where I think the anime really did outdo the manga, and it deserves to be rewatched as many times as humanly possible. Heading back to Marineford now, and if someone was to ask me what one of the most beautifully animated scenes in the entire series was, it would be very hard to go past Luffy standing up to all three admirals during the Paramount War. And the key to this scene is pretty much entirely water. From the moment Jinbei threw Luffy, the movement and sound of the water had me captivated. And it continues to be a major presence even after Luffy's dramatic landing. Encircling the four figures in this state of slow motion, very effectively stopping time on this chaotic battlefield and allowing us to truly appreciate the moment at hand. Although I will say that with this one, there is something that does kind of annoy me personally, which is that it takes Luffy exactly 15 seconds to raise his head whilst we linger on this fairly static shot with the sounds of him breathing. For me, it's just way, way, way too long, which I know is ironic because I just praise the scene for slow motion and being able to stop time, but there is artistically valuable slow motion and then there's just filler pacing. Still, I very much understand why people come back to this glorious scene again and again. Now to change things up a bit, let's talk about a scene where nothing happened according to Zoro's account anyway. Luckily, we have a bit more insight. And this was a scene that was burned into my mind the very moment I read it in the manga. And I was honestly, you know, a little bit nervous about how Toei was going to realize it because they were well into their decline of quality during Thriller Bark. But to my pleasant surprise, this absurdly rewatched scene was done to perfection. In particular, I think the whole affair was given the right amount of breathing room. This scene wasn't artificially drawn out to the extent that I would call it filler pacing, but it was very deliberately slow, building up to the sudden moment of Zoro thrusting his arms into the bubble of doom created by Kuma. And then the final shot of him standing proudly, hanging onto his life by a mere thread, really does tell us everything we'd ever need to know about Zoro. And as a result, I would say that this scene gets rewatched more than any of his actual fights, at least according to the truly staggering amount of mentions it got in my comments anyway. And something else that got a shocking amount of mentions, which surprised me quite a bit, was the walk to Arlong Park. But you know what, fair enough, because this was probably one of the greatest additions that the anime has ever made, because fun fact here, this dramatic and practically iconic walk was not in the manga. There we basically go from Luffy and the others ready to fight to Johnny and Yosaku talking and then bam, Luffy punches a hole in the wall. And that does work fairly well on page, but the anime adaptation is an entirely different beast. Here the team chose to have Johnny and Yosaku's words playing against what is basically a march of the four straw hats. Luffy, Zoro, Sanji and Usopp, each of whom look determined, confident and incredibly pissed off. Juxtaposed against the words of Johnny and Yosaku, it works perfectly and it makes Luffy's ultimate punch to break down the wall and call out Arlong feel that much more earned. It really is the epitome of classic One Piece and given how old it is, it may even be one of the most empirically rewatched scenes in the entire series. However, there were a few others that got some excessive mentions as well. One of which was the finale of Luffy versus Crocodile. And just like Luffy versus Luchi, this was a childhood staple of mine. So much so that the number 126 is actually quite special to me because it was ingrained into me that this was the episode where that occurred. So every time I see the number 126, I do actually think of Luffy versus Crocodile, you know, sadly enough because that's my life. But this really was and still is one of the greatest pieces of action that One Piece has to offer. And it came at a time where Luffy was finally being pushed to his limits. And as a result, we got to view the full scope of his combative creativity and raw determination, which gave us this stunning mid-air clash where Luffy utterly dominates Crocodile. So much so that he even ends up punching him straight through solid bedrock. And looking back on it, no, it's not the greatest of animation these days, but the shot composition, the music and the voice acting are all still incredibly on point and well worth watching even now, just over 18 years after its original air date. And another timeless classic would of course be Robin's I Want to Live from Any Sobby. It's one of those things really, all I have to do is say the words Robin and Any Sobby, and I bet that almost all of you will immediately have a perfect mental flashback of Robin's words, as well as the guttural desperate vocal performance behind them. But this scene is so much more than that because it's set up so dramatically by the slow walk of the Straw Hats to get into their position on the wall, facing off directly against CP9, followed by Luffy declaring war on the world government, all for Robin's sake, which finally breaks through to her and gives Robin permission to admit the very basic desire that she wants to live. A desire that she had been suppressing ever since the O'Hara incident and a cathartic release to both her and the audience after having heard the words out loud. However, as good as this is, there is still one scene that had so many more mentions than literally any other, and that would be Luffy punching a world noble. 
specifically punching St. Charles. This is one of the most iconic moments in all of One Piece, where the stage was set by the shocking brutality of St. Charles, but what really makes this scene is the buildup of pure rage that we see within Luffy, the likes of which we had never seen before. This sort of internalized force that usually doesn't present itself within a casually explosive Luffy. However here, Luffy harnessed this anger and just walked towards Charles. He walked slowly and purposely, completely aware of what he was about to do and the consequences that it would have. In fact, you could say that this one punch really really is responsible for shaping One Piece as we know it today, because it set into motion a series of events that saw the separation of the Straw Hats, but it was 100% worth it. Watching Luffy quite literally punch the color out of the frame when his fists impact Charles' sad excuse for a face is probably the most satisfied I've ever been whilst watching the anime, or indeed any anime. And given how often this scene seems to be rewatched by all of you, I'd say the same is very much true of the greater One Piece fanbase. But what do you guys think? Please do leave your thoughts in the comments below or even join my Discord server. And if you'd like to see more videos like this, then please do go and check out some of my other content or even subscribe to the channel for more glorious One Piece business uploaded straight into your YouTube feeds. But for now, this has been the Ground Line Review and I'll see you next time.